Hey there guys, it's Anthony here from Cutting Edge Guitar, just following up my last two videos for you. Um, what I did a couple of videos ago, I just asked you guys for a favour, because basically I'm at a point where I'm nearly ready to launch the third and final volume of my advanced guitar course. And I wanted some help from you guys just to figure out exactly what you think it would need, or, or like what you guys think you need. Two really important things that would change your guitar playing right now. And the response to that initial question has been massively overwhelming. So basically I've got a, just there's a little speech bubble in the bottom right hand corner when you go to Cutting Edge Guitar where you can ask me anything you want. And uh, the questions have been flooding in about all sorts of things. Um, but actually like they, they generally would fall under three categories fretboard knowledge problems, technique problems, or how do you implement the other two areas into playing musical, um, playing musically, you know, making melodies or playing stuff that just sounds great. So what I did in the last video, I wanted to basically put together an answer to a few of those questions in a, in a bit of a nutshell, but obviously uh, there's been so much stuff that's been coming in that I wasn't able to deal with everything in that particular one lesson. So what I want to do here today is talk about another area, um, which is I've been asked quite a lot about how to play through chord changes musically, how to use scales musically, or how to not sound mechanical on the fretboard and all that sort of thing. Um, so the really interesting point about this is that obviously in something like this, I'm going to give you a lesson on this and I'll give you some pointers right now. Something you can take away that you're going to go, okay, that, that is something that's, that's changed the way that I think. But ultimately, a lot of the stuff that's in those questions already, and obviously this is great for me, I can see that I'm, I'm ticking boxes and, and getting things right on what people are going to want to see. But this is basically where the course is going. Right. So what I want to kind of describe for you in a nutshell here is how you really go about doing these things. There's no one 10 minute lesson that's going to sort these problems out for you. It's just not. It's these are big subjects. So what you need in order to be able to do that, first and foremost, you absolutely need to know your fretboard inside and out. OK, if you don't know your fretboard inside and out. You kind of stuck for what the options are going to be. OK. You then after that, you need to have great technique. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you need to be a shredder because I know that, you know, there's lots of people out there who are like, you know, you might want to play like Robin Ford or Larry Carlton, something like that. They're not shredders, but they certainly have great technique. It doesn't matter what you want to play. You need good technique to be able to execute it. And then finally, once you've got those two things all together, you need the musicality to be able to implement it in the way that you want to. Whatever the sound is in your head, whatever that melody is, whatever that phrase is, that lick, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, whether you want to play face frying metal shred guitar, you want to play cool, tasty, phrased blues guitar, you know, whatever it is you want to do, you need to be able to implement the, those two areas that we talked about first. So the thing is with that, that's kind of the way that I've, I've built up the course is that first things first, you're going to learn your fretboard inside and out, then you're going to perfect your technique, then we're going to spend ages learning this thing that I call the scale pyramid, which I'll talk to you more about in an upcoming video after this, um, which is basically how you learn to really master scales and break them down into lots of different areas so that you're never stuck for options. And then finally, we're gonna look at how you can jumble all of these things together, the different techniques, the fretboard devices, the knowledge that you'd have of, your, uh, of, that, of scales and all them sorts of things so that you're never stuck for options and you can just play whatever it is that you wanna play. So what I want to talk about with this, um, where did all of this come from first and foremost? It's obviously taken me a long time to put all of this stuff together. So I've been teaching guitar since I was 17. Okay, my guitar teacher at the time, he wanted to retire. I'd been playing guitar for about four years and he was like, you're getting particularly good. I've got some kids that you need to take off of my hands, get into that. So anyway, that was that was when I decided that I wanted to be a guitar teacher. And I was like, I loved it, I really enjoyed it. And the thing for me was the idea of being a professional touring musician and all that sort of stuff was, yeah, great. Obviously I want to play guitar to the highest levels, but I was like, as well, I have a passion for helping people. That's what I really wanna do. And I not only did I have a passion for helping people, but 
I was like, I don't want to do my guitar gigging at weekends and you know have a different job in the week or whatever. I was like, I want to do guitar 100% of the time. So teaching seemed like a very obvious thing for me to go into because it was like, well, this is a way that you can help people. It's a job that you can do so that you've got guitar in your hands all the time. And also as well, when you're teaching people, it helps you get better. You, you, you come up with problems that you think, right, how would I get around that? And it helps you constantly find the answers to things. From my perspective, that's obviously led me on to writing books about stuff, you know, because I've written so much material for my students over the years. It's now led to the courses, the Skype and Zoom things that I've done, you know, that's taken off to a point where I've got students. So I'm based in the UK. I've got students all over the USA. I've got students all over Europe. I've got people in Japan buying my books now, all these sorts of things. So it's kind of like, you know, it's been a way for me to spread my wings and like help people on a much grander scale. Some of the uh, the people, for example, I'm just going to just think of uh, my student, Paulie, who's uh, become an, a friend. He's not just a student, but he's a friend. You know, he came to me initially with a lot of these same issues that people have been talking about through the chat bubble there. Um, it's just like, you know, I've watched all the videos. I've, li I've bought all the magazine articles. I've done all of this stuff over the years. But nobody's ever managed to give me a program that would help me build my technique in a way that that I need. Um, and of course, you know, playing through chord changes or understanding things like modes, you know, they're so that's such a, a feared thing for guitar players to understand how that all works. But what you, what you quite simply need, you need a way of taking it from the ground level and saying, right, do you know this? Do you know that? Blah, blah, blah. And then just building it up. So like, I have a list of questions on my iPad that I will ask any new student, Skype or Zoom. And Paulie, if he's uh, watching this, he'll probably get involved in the comments and let you know. Um, but the thing is, right, I ask these questions and it's like a checklist of all of the things that you know. So many guitar players think they know a lot of things. They think they know all the notes on the fretboard. They think they know their intervals. They think they know their triads. They think they know chords. They think they know the cage system. They think they know the three notes per string system. They know all the scales, blah, blah. And when I ask them under pressure, boom, show me this, show me this, show me this all the time, it falls flat. And the thing is with that, that's where all of these problems are. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, if you want to be able to play over changes, or if you want to be able to play musically through something, if you can't, if you can't just spot instantly the root note of your chord and then see the intervals of your chord and the chord form and your arpeggios and all of these things after, you know, the, the sort of the fretboard fans out one thing at a time. If you can't see that, then you're really, really stuck. So I'll, I'll pull out of the hat. Yesterday I was doing a lesson with a student on a Robin Ford style blues playing. So let's say we're playing over a G dominant blues, a bit of a, it was kind of like a talk to your daughter style backing track, but let's say my first chord's G7. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim to target notes of the G mixolydian mode over that first chord. So it depends on where you are on the fretboard, but let's say what I would do with a student, I'd probably go like this. I'll get them moving up and down the fretboard. I'll say stop, wherever they say stop, well, I'll get them to say it for me, stop, wherever they say stop, I end up just on the fretboard. So let's say, boom, they've said stop here. First things first, I've got to see where's my G root note. I've got one here, I've got one here. So that puts me in position two of the caged system. If you're thinking caged and if you know your caged system. If you don't know your caged system, if you prefer things like the three notes per string system, you'd want to see that from this particular root note, G mixolydian looks like this. Again, if you're thinking caged, well, you'd probably say that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what system you're using, as long as you know where the notes are right away, okay? So once you've got that, and you know where the notes are, you want to obviously be able to spot your arpeggio. So you want to be able to see roots, you want to see thirds, you want to see fifths, sevenths, roots, thirds again. The thing is with that stuff, just being able to spot the notes of the chord is what allows you to hit the notes that are going to sound best against your backdrop. But then when you do stuff like that, where I added the ninth, 
that's where you start adding the colour, but it's about being able to see those initial the initial chord tones that you can start going, oh, okay. An eleventh or them sorts of things, you know, elevenths, ninths, thirteenths, whatever. Now, imagine that we're playing over that blues change. So I'm playing over that G7. The next chord is going to go to a, like the fourth above, right? So we're either going to go to a C7 or a C9. Well, let's say, for example, first things first, all I want to do, I was around that position in the neck, what I want to do is just hit chord tones of that C9. So what I need to then do, first things first, it's all about your root notes. So I was around this position of the neck, I've got to find where the C's are. The C's are here, here, and here. That puts me in position five for the key of C if we're using the cage system. And what you would do with that, or what you could do, you can spot your triad. And if you wanted to, you can take that into the dominant seventh arpeggio by adding in the flat seven, all them sorts of things, or what you could also do is you could play a full-on C mixolydian mode. So over these two chords, dominant seven for G7 and C7, it's essentially mixolydian would be, I mean, there's loads of different options, but mixolydian would be one particular scale that you could say this is highly applicable, okay? So if I was thinking in terms of caged, again, I've got my notes there, I've got the, the arpeggios and all the rest of it. All I now need to do is insert that the shape for uh, C mixolydian in position five. Okay, or if I wanted to do that in three notes per string around that particular position. Again, obviously, as I'm playing through the shape, I'm not just playing a shape, I'm drawing it back to that C root note, okay? So it sounds at home in C. Because this is where a lot of people go wrong with this sort of thing as well, is they will look at a shape like that, and they go, oh, that's the shape for A Phrygian. Uh, well, it's only that if you're playing over an A minor 7 chord. <laughs> So obviously we're playing over C7, so it sounds home on C. Anyway, the point that I'm making is to not sound mechanical. First and foremost, you've got to have that level of fretboard knowledge where you can just immediately go to those right notes. Once you've gone to those right notes, you then want to have a hierarchy of the either like the notes that you want to play, and now that's about choice. What do you like? Do you like the notes of the chord? Do you want to play extensions or whatever? And then finally, you want to get to a point where you can understand scales in a much more musical way than just playing shapes, which I want to talk to you about in the next video, because if I carry on with this now, this video is going to go on for far too long. So essentially, the takeaway from this video, what I would suggest to anyone in order to get that first bit of this down where you can just start not being mechanical over the changes first and foremost you don't want to be having to think about where the notes are you just want to know them so take a chord progression any chord progression you like and just be able to say right wherever i am on the neck can i find the root notes wherever i after that can i find the shape of the scale that i want can i find the arpeggio you know all of them sorts of things um that is a bit of a tall order, I'm not going to lie, you know, there's a lot of homework in that. Obviously, this is all of the stuff that I'm putting in the course, and it's in a structured, methodical manner, so you can start at getting the notes down, then getting the intervals down, then getting the triads down, then getting the arpeggios down, just boom, 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 boom. The thing is with this, if you only spend, say, if you, if you think where you are with your playing now, if you could say in one year from now, one year, um, all of this stuff would be together, you'd know your fretboard inside and out, your technique would be so much better, and you would be able to play the music that you want to play. I mean, most of the people watching this video have probably been playing guitar for 10 years, maybe even 20 years or more, right? If you could say, out of all of that time, you've been spinning your wheels, messing around with YouTube or DVDs that end up staying in cases, or the things that, you, you know, things that aren't 
giving you accountability and making you go week on week. I'm going to practice this, practice this, practice this and get better, get better, get better. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a one year is nothing. One year is absolutely nothing out of that amount of time. And, you know, I've, I've spoke to or spoken to guitar players from all over the place, you know, up and down the UK, all over the US, Europe, all the time that they kind of already know that this is the stuff that they need. But they don't do it because there's no accountability. There's no accountability in terms of somebody saying, get this done, get this done, get this done. And obviously that's the whole point again of what I'm putting into the courses. Not only that, that, you know, these are online courses with a structure and all that stuff, but you get to speak to me the whole time on them. If you want me to be dropping you a line, kicking you up the jacksy to make sure that this stuff's done, I'll do it. I mean, I can track my students' progress through the courses, so <laughs> I'll make sure that you get it done and you will get that level of improvement. The technique thing as well, right? The, again, going back to that whole, oh, I don't want to be an unmusical shredder and all the rest of it. Who says you have to be an unmusical shredder? Get great technique and then just don't use it. If you've got this much in the in the tank that you can play up to that speed, that level of fluidity and all of this sort of stuff, no one says you have to shred and melt the strings all the time. If you play simpler, more phrased stuff, if you've got great technique, it's going to sound more polished, it's going to sound more professional. And I think this is a thing that I speak to about um, with students all the time is they'll come along for a lesson and then it will be, yeah, I want to get the fretboard knowledge down. So I don't want to be practicing the technique because I don't want to be a shredder. I don't want to do all this. I don't want to do all that. Absolutely fine. Totally get it. But the next thing is when they're playing, they don't have the fluidity on the fretboard to just be able to go where they want. And, you know, practicing things like your legato technique or alternate picked lines which would start low and work up. you know just being able to just pick your way through those things you don't have to do it like you don't have to be a shredder but just having the fluidity to be able to you know meander around the fretboard um will give you what you want and of course you know there is another element to this in that there's a lot of people that are always going to turn around and say cost is an element to guitar lessons i don't want to pay i want to watch it for free on youtube i want to do this i want to do that and i've got to tell you guys this is just the way that it is straight up is anything in life that's any good costs you okay so you know if you when if you want to go and buy a, a really good car you don't sit there and think right okay i'm going to go and buy the absolute cheapest one that i can buy and expect it to be a ferrari guess what? A Ferrari's going to cost you loads of money. It's just the way the world works. And things like this are the same. You know, I put I put tuition out on things like YouTube and uh, there's loads of other guitar teachers out there that are putting great stuff out on YouTube. Like the lessons that can be available for free can be very, very good. But what are you going to miss? You're going to miss the structure. YouTube is not designed to go, here's lesson one, here's lessons two, lesson two, here's lesson three. It fires things at you that it thinks you're going to watch and it tries to just keep you on the platform so it can show you adverts. Um, so the content that people are putting out there can be great, but it's never going to be if you if you actually, uh, you know, invest in something like, uh, you know, courses or lessons or books, you know, whenever you invest your money, you're going to get a product which is just going to be better than anything that's free. And that's just a simple fact. Also, as well, with things like YouTube and all the rest of it, you don't get support. If someone's, you know, an active member of one of my courses, members area, they've bought one of my books, if they ask me a question, I'm obviously going to be more willing to help than if someone is just, you know, commenting on the YouTube channel and all the rest of it. But I want to help everybody. I'll, I'll always get involved and I'll help people out. But there's going to be a priority and you're going to get more help if you're a course member. You just are. That's the way it is. So... Next video, guys, what I'm going to do for you is I want to talk about this um, playing more musically with scales. OK, so that was a big question. So all of these questions I've tried to answer so far, they've, they, I'm just kind of taking one subject that will encompass lots of different questions because I've been asked so much stuff. So the next thing is kind of I've, I've been asked the same question many different ways. How do I play musically with scales? And the fact is, there is one element which is probably the best element that i think is on my course 
is this thing that's called the scale pyramid and it's about how you unpack scales so that you have an almost endless number of um, options that you can use if anyone has been watching this lesson and there are any of my students that have already been using this stuff by all means get involved in the comments and tell everyone uh, how your progress has been with it because you know there's lots of people out there that have done this stuff and have had great results don't be shy get involved with the comments and tell everyone your thoughts also if you want to get involved in the comments and ask yet more questions i'm willing to help so you know either use the speech bubble get involved in the comments uh please do like the videos and share them to anyone else that you think this will help and that's it for now so there is another video coming out in a couple more days that will answer that next question for you all right guys you take care i'll see you soon